the most frustrating thing I hear from these institutions is that they don't tell their donors where to put their money. Then what are you here for? We both know that when a donor contributes those funds to your donor advised fund, you are not only the fiduciary responsibility, not only do you have fiduciary responsibility of those assets, that you have the moral and legal responsibility of those funds. And if you have not been paying attention, the rise of technology enabled philanthropy, particularly crowdfunding, crypto giving, decentralized autonomous organizations, Silicon Valley backed donor advised fund intermediaries like the app Dafty, Daffy, I didn't come up with it, will significantly contribute to the philanthropic reckoning I'm speaking of, significantly undercutting the role of community foundations. Millennials and Gen Z are looking to support social movements that settler philanthropy considers too risky, whether it's supporting indigenous land defenders, funding anti-Black racism activists or climate activists. And I understand my tone might come off as aggressive, but I'm just questioning the generosity and commitment to change. I'm questioning the effectiveness and efficiency of philanthropy. I'm also Somali, so we talk aggressively. See, it's not philanthropy's responsibility to provide day-to-day -day support to our communities. It's the responsibility of our governments, federal, provincial, and municipal, to ensure that their residents not only have the ability to live in dignity, but to thrive. And that philanthropy should take the risk to find ways to transform our society and fund innovation. While liberal progressive philanthropy is so focused on demonstrating their impact and validity of their contributions, it paints the question, who are they trying to prove this vanity to? Their peers, their families, or to taxpayers, as all philanthropic assets are taxpayer money. The second you receive a charitable uh, incentive from a donation, that money becomes taxpayer money. And unfortunately, I must temper my optimism with realism. It will take significant, bold leadership from philanthropy, philanthropists, family foundations, community foundations, and most importantly, the charities that accept donations from these sources to implement significant philanthropic reform. And I know it's very easy for me to say all of this. I recognize my privilege. I recognize I can go in, on stage and travel the world and speak at conferences and talk about this because I don't have to bite the hand that feeds me. You know, I know who I work for. I work for OVO and I know they provide those benefits. I know I have access to an extreme amount of social capital. My philanthropy is bold. My philanthropy is messy. It's nonlinear. It's built on collaboration. It's driven on trust, humility, and vision. It is not driven by key performance indicators. It's not built on participatory grant making with municipal amounts, nor is it built on social impact bonds, result based funding, pay for success models. My philanthropy is not interested in your sudden interests in giving circles as the form of our community's self-resilience in defiance of philanthropy's indifference. We've been given the privilege of deciding when and where to allocate taxpayer money. When we are window shopping charitable initiatives, even though we have the assets, we are prioritizing our own vanity versus preserving our cap and preserving capital versus our people and planet. I'm confident that those of you with access privilege and these philanthropic assets invested in our communities with transformational gifts, we will strive to end the continued dependency on philanthropy and government. So what are the takeaways from my little rant? Without significant philanthropic sector reform from the federal government of Canada, we will not solve our climate crisis, our urban affordability crisis, housing, food insecurity, violence, or gender inequality. The impact investing community will not increase the social, political, and economic well-being of BIPOC communities if they do not reflect the communities they serve. That means more Black and Indigenous fund managers, less rigorous due diligence barriers, as these are philanthropic assets should be used to fund risk. That traditional settler philanthropy at a as a concept is at a crossroads. Do we allow these failed approaches that are built on the exploitation, extraction, and genocide of indigenous communities and have contribu contributed to the continued anti-Black racism in our communities? Or do we allow ourselves to reimagine a new philanthropic sector that prioritizes and improves the well-being of 
indigenous communities, black communities, and newcomer communities. More importantly, who in this sector will speak up and get loud? Will we allow ourselves as non-for-profit workers or those in the philanthropic space to continue these power imbalances to continue? Will we allow ourselves to be governed by charitable laws that are rooted in colonialism, exploitation, extraction, and genocide of indigenous peoples? Our philanthropic sector is not only immoral, it is built on bad public policy. So let us be accomplices for change and not performative allies. Thank you very much.